Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. This evening, Michelle Abraham is training us on how to use podcasting to amplify our influence, impact, and income. Michelle, let's start with a couple of get to know you questions. Why are you so interested in podcasting? <laughs> That's a great question, Roger. Um, I'm really interested in podcasting because I saw um, the change it made in myself when I became a listener and um, the ease of use of the platform itself and also the um, the accessibility. It's everywhere now it, and you can take podcasting with you. So for me, what made me so passionate about it is seeing the how easy it's going to be for um, people to use it and how it's not going anywhere in the near future. It's going to be around for a long time. Great. Now you run a company, which is a podcast management company, and it's called, I believe, Amplify You. What influenced you to launch this venture? Yeah, I love and um, I, well, I love what I do first of all. And uh, we uh, we started Amplify You, and the meaning of behind Amplify You is amplifying you out into the world. I felt like there's so many people that are amazing at what they do, but they're like the best kept secret out there. So we don't want you to be the best kept secret. So I really feel passionate about helping people get onto this platform and being able to amplify their voice, increase their influence and their impact that they're making in the world. Um, through pop through podcasting so um, that's why we started amplify you and we noticed that you know a lot of companies were there to help you launch your show but then that's it they're off the off they went and um, there was no one there to help you support your show ongoing and help you with all the things that we believe our experts should stay in the content creation zone while we take care of everything else like all the done for you things like editing your show and writing show notes and um, making social media content and publishing it for you. So uh, we really help our experts stay in their zone of genius. Beautiful. I can only imagine there is um, a great future for Amplify You. <laughs> Audience members, would you please uh, type any questions you've got into the chat? And periodically, I will interrupt Michelle and pose your questions to her. The video recording of Michelle's training will be made public, uh, uh, hopefully, uh, before I go to bed tonight. Uh, and uh, you'll be provided with the link. Michelle, are you ready to rock the stage and wow us? I was born ready. Yes. <laughs> you were born ready. Well, then the stage is yours. Take it away. Excellent. Oh, well, thank you so much, Roger, for having me here today. It is my pleasure, my honor to be here. And I'm excited to really like share with you guys. You know, I started um, my podcasting adventure with a meetup group uh, in Vancouver called Podcasters Meetup Group. <laughs> and it started off a long time ago, and that was back in 2012. So I'm excited to be back on a meetup group. In Vancouver and talking about my favorite thing, podcasting. So we're going to dive right in. I've got so much content to give you guys. Plus, um, you guys had so many great questions that I've already heard from that I want to incorporate into my stories and incorporate into the content that I'm delivering with um, to you already. So we've got a lot to cover. So I'm just going to dive um, right in. We're going to talk about like the landscape of podcasting, because I think a lot of people are new to podcasting, maybe have started listening to shows, but maybe are not familiar with like the, the publishing side of podcasting, what that looks like and what what is happening in the podcasting world right now. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story and how it relates to how I actually got started. And it ties perfectly into our conversation earlier tonight because it all started with a summit. So we're going to dive into that. And that, that couldn't have lined up any perfect, any more perfect than, than Roger allowed that to line up this this earlier this evening. So uh, that was great, a great question earlier. And then we're going to talk about the three big opportunities in podcasting, the four barriers that are stopping most smart entrepreneurs from launching, and the five powerful ways to amplify your influence and make more money with podcasting. Then I'm going to hopefully have time for some questions at the end. So you may want to pay attention to this part. So I like to start with this because this, I think, is the most valuable, valuable thing. So in a world where time and attention is our most valuable assets, there is no other platform that even compares the amount of time and attention you get from your listener as podcasting does. 
What do I mean by that? Well, if you take a look at Facebook, the average, the average person, you get about 18.2 seconds of their time and attention. YouTube is a little better at four minutes and 20 seconds. Instagram, not quite as good at 26 seconds, a little bit shorter attention, attention span on Instagram. The podcast, the amount of time our listener spends listening to us on a podcast is 20 minutes. That is a huge amount of time. And if you think about what our listeners are typically doing while they're listening to us on the podcast, they're out walking the dog, they're cooking dinner, they are maybe driving in the car, maybe they're commuting, maybe they're at work, um, going to the gym perhaps, but they're doing something as long as we're taking us along with them in their earbuds. That's a very intimate place to be. And that time and attention is super valuable. So we're not in interrupting their day. They're taking us along with them during their day as a listener. And I think that's very cool. So did you know that Google is now ranking podcasts episodes individually higher even than YouTube? So if you take a look at Smart Passive Income here, you can see in my little screenshot here, there's three episodes that are individually being Google indexed. So that means if I'm talking about Lamborghinis and Ferraris on my, on my podcast show and someone's typing into Google Lamborghinis and, pot and Ferraris, those are going to start showing up higher than my website, higher than uh, podcasts or higher than YouTube videos. So this is just the beginning of the SEO impact that podcasts will have. And this is just coming from the written content right now. Google is set in the next few years to be able to start recognizing voice. And when they do, all of those podcasters out there that have so much verbal content, they're going to start uh, rising up in the rankings as well. So if that's not a, uh, a reason alone to start podcasting, I don't know what is just for the SEO purposes and searchability of that. So that's in the next few years down the road. So you're in the right company. Just to share a little bit about um, Amplify You, we've launched, my team and I had launched 147 podcasts in the last 18 months. Um, we, I've been involved in the podcasting space since 2012, um, but it wasn't until the last couple of years that it got popular. So we finally picked the podcast only lane about three years ago. And this year I was, spoke, I was um, nominated as one of the top 50 moms in podcasting at number 15 here. But, you know, and I'm not saying this to brag at all. I just wanted to show you this is cool. But what's even cooler for me, I'm even more uh, excited about that. We're actually here with one of our clients here from Vancouver is number 14. Another client over here is number 17. And we made a client in from the US on page on the tape page before at number six. So we were there with three other of our clients, which I think that's that to me is really exciting. And Jenna Kutcher was here as number one, of course. <laughs> and Kevin Harrington says, Amplify You is North America's top podcast uh, company, which is really neat that he said that. And also, I won the award of Entrepreneur of the Year from Business from the Heart this year, which is pretty exciting. So it's been a great year for us. So I want to know about you. And I heard a little bit about you guys. I don't think I heard, I think I only heard maybe one person has a podcast in um, that, I, that I heard in the chat. So do you have a podcast? If you have one, write yes in the chat and put your link to your show there. I'd love to check it out afterwards. I'll save the chat. So go ahead and type in there if you have a podcast. I'd love to check it out. So my goal for you during this presentation and during our time together is that you don't end up being like this guy. So I'm going to give you a ton of information, but I don't want you leaving all confused or frustrated or ready to bang your head on the computer. Because this is what happens to a lot of people when they're not, uh, when, when they think about podcasting, they think it has a lot of technology. There's a lot of pieces involved. There's a lot of things to go and and a lot of people just end up getting frustrated and give up before they even get started. So I'm hoping to break it down and make it feel a little bit more doable for you. <laughs> so just to back it up to the very beginning, there are really three opportunities for, for entrepreneurs in podcasting. And so when we talk about podcasting, there's a huge space in podcasting. And this, the area that I focus on is entrepreneurs. So this is just a really tiny, tiny little market in, within the podcasting industry. So um, the, what's different about entrepreneurs and podcasting is entrepreneurs typically have a business. They want to see our ROI from their podcast into their business. And they also are, are there to kind of help with positioning themselves as an expert, gaining influence, gaining an audience. Um, and also, you know, they're not necessarily in it for ads and sponsorship and they're not Joe Rogan and they're not there 
for the comedy show or the sports show, they're there usually for their business. So that's kind of the space that we work in. So those are the kind of shows that we know the best. And so what we see for entrepreneurs as the three biggest opportunities is one, you can be a host of a show. You can have your own show. And I think that's fantastic. And it takes a little bit of work, but the rewards are great for having your own show. The opportunities are huge and the doors open up for you. Um, the second opportunity is if you're not sure being a host is for you, starting off as a guest is a great opportunity. And if you have uh, your own show, being a guest is also something that you should be doing in addition to being a host. Because if you think about being a host on a podcast, it's like going out there and putting your little spider web out all these different places around the world. And, and then podcast episodes stay there forever. So if you think about going on a radio show or a TV show or a magazine or a summit, those things disappear. <laughs> a podcast episode is never going anywhere unless the host takes it down. So it's a really good investment on your time because it's working for you 24-7 out there. Someone is listening to it. Okay, and then third opportunity is becoming a podcast manager. So that's not for everyone. This is more for people who are looking to maybe be a virtual assistant or maybe they're working in a marketing agency or maybe they are um, social media managers could also do podcast management as well. So those are the three main um, areas that we see opportunities um, for our amazing entrepreneurs out there. And so I wanted to take the opportunity on this slide here just to quickly talk to you about being a guest. And so we kind of just dove in about the benefits of being a guest before, but being a guest can do some really great things. It can allow you the leverage of um, someone else's audience. So we call that OPP, other people's platforms. And you want to get on the OPPs because they've already done the hard work to, um, to be on there. So I actually flew down to San Diego to be on this podcast. And then they end up being clients of mine for the last couple of years. But um, it's kind of interesting how different this is more done as a more traditional radio show. But um, being a guest on a podcast is really great. You can go there, talk about your story, talk about your experiences, offer a free gift, and then in return, some of their audience will follow you back to your show. So I think it's a really great strategy. And being, uh, you know, Doug was talking earlier about being prepared as a host and uh, or being prepared as a guest and a couple of um, words of advice. If you're going to go on to a show or if you're looking to be a guest on shows, there's a few things that you need to do. One, first of all, you need to get in front of that show host somehow. If you don't know them personally already, you need to figure out a way to get in front of them. So how would I suggest you do that? I would suggest you go onto social media and start um, liking, following their posts, friending them on Facebook, following them on LinkedIn, um, just kind of get into their engagement of their social media and start engaging in a positive way with their stuff. Then I would go and leave them a review on iTunes or Apple Podcasts and go and, um, and start just doing as many service-driven things that you can for them as possible. Connect them with a really cool guest or find a way to kind of get into their world. Um, and then, then the opportunity may come up for you to be a guest. Now here's where being a host works in your favor. So if I really want to be a guest on this show and I, you know, done all those things I just said and engaged with this person and their audience, and I still haven't been invited to be a guest on their show, or we haven't connected fully yet, I would then reach out as a host of a show and invite them to come on my show. So that's where the power of having your own show for leverage is a little bit, is a little bit greater there. So anyways, that's about being a guest and how you can be prepared as a guest, know your story, know a couple of main points, um, be able to teach in small chunks of media side bites. Um, podcasts are always looking for like those really great hooks, a really great segment here, a couple of good pieces of content here and there. Um, and so those are really important to have already chunked out. And so that's the way that you can lead the conversation back to um, where the people are coming to meet you. So for myself, I'd want to talk about the things that prevent people from ever starting a podcast, the three opportunities there are in podcasting, and also maybe five ways to amplify your influence in podcasting, just like we're talking about tonight, right? So you get the idea where you really are talking in chunks and allowing the conversation to drive back to what you uh, want to offer people a free gift at the end of it as well. Uh, Michelle, uh, a few questions and feel sure. free to just say, I'll be talking about that later, if that's Absolutely. the case. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Preston wants to know, how do you start a podcast or what platform do you use? Yep, we'll be getting to that. Okay, uh, Carol Lee. Carol Lee has a, a YouTube channel and her videos are about four minutes long. Mm -hmm. uh, and Carol Lee would like to know, is this podcastable? Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. Actually, yeah, you can uh, turn those into podcasts, no problem. And then maybe like every other one, I would do maybe a little bit longer. So then you have some smaller episodes and then maybe you have a longer one. Then you have some shorter episodes than a longer one. So, um, but four minute podcast is totally fine. Okay. Russell Brunson from ClickFunnels used to do five minute marketing in his car. <laughs> it was his podcast. <laughs> Marnie says, does it cost anything to have a podcast? How often do you need to use the podcast and how about LinkedIn for making connections to your podcast? LinkedIn, LinkedIn connections is a great way to reach out for connections for your podcast um, and getting to know more people on LinkedIn. You'll see lots of people who have podcasts on there. And also if you put podcast guesting in your profile on LinkedIn, I get uh, approached about podcasting all the time because it's in my profile. So when people are looking for podcasting or podcast hosts or guests, it's showing up in the searches. So definitely using LinkedIn and the cost of podcasting. I'll get into that around um, in, a, in a few minutes as well. Melissa says, I actually used to watch a daily YouTube channel and only listen to the audio. I think she's contributing to your conversation with, uh, yeah. with Carolee. Yeah, okay. it's interesting because then people are, you know, there sometimes people prefer, you got to think about all the different learning types out in the world. And this is why podcasting is so fascinating because a good portion of the world are auditory learners. So even though there is a video there, people turn it off and just listen to the audio. And then, so if it's just audio only, People don't have to be looking at a screen so they can take you and do go and go for a walk and walk the dog or drive the car. And so that's why audio is so powerful. I think it's also, um, you know, visual is the number one learning way, but audio is second. So um, it, it definitely helps being in that format. No further so gonna, questions. Perfect. Thanks, Roger. I'm going to move on to being a host because that's going to cover a couple of the questions here. So being a host on the on a podcast is uh, great. You have creative control. Honestly, guys, it's like the, the wild west out there in podcasting. You can set up a show any which way you want, do whatever you want in a show and um, and just have complete creative control. Um, there are some things that work better than others, but it is still like kind of the wild west out there. There aren't regulations and rules of a lot of things out there that you really need to pay attention to. So in order to be a host, there's a few things that you need to set up. You need to set up a podcast properly. So the equipment that I use for podcasting is a laptop computer and I use Zoom. And most of our clients, even though we are talking about audio content um, and audio podcasting, most of our clients actually record in video. It's not necessary, but we do for the reason of repurposing because you also wanna get on YouTube. It is the second most popular the podcast's channel is YouTube, which is kind of funny. Um, so that's why we want, you want to make sure you do it in video and audio as well, just to get the most out of it. Um, so in order to start a show, there's a few things that you need. You need to have a microphone and a, a laptop computer and a Zoom and an internet connection. And those are the basic tools and that's about it. From there, um, to start a show, you need to have an idea. You want to name your show very literally. So um, having a show with a name like called the Vancouver Business Network, that's a very good, good name for a podcast because it just shows that's, that's you know, what you're going to, you can expect when you get on that show. You need to have an intro and an outro that goes along to music usually, and then a piece of content in the middle that's your actual show. From there, you need to edit those together and then you publish it onto a publishing site. And there's tons of different platforms out there. We use one called Captivate mostly. There's Captivate, Libsyn, Blueberry, Podbean, Buzzsprout. There's lots and lots of different ones out there. I did hear someone mention Anchor and I would just be wary of that one because it's so easy, it's free, it's from your phone, but then they have control of your content. And so it's not your own content and they put ads in front of it. So. Um, just be wary of that one a little bit. So moving on from the host. So that's what it takes to be a host. But what it does is open up so many more opportunities for you. One of my very first uh, experiences as a host is I got a free pass to go to a social media conference here in Vancouver. 
And I got to interview all of the speakers as they came off the stage because I had a podcast. How cool is that? That's an opportunity that wouldn't have existed unless I was a podcast host. So there's lots of really neat things that it allows you to become media and it allows you some privileges and some opportunities that you wouldn't normally get, especially when it comes to reaching out to people that you wouldn't be able to. Um, I love it because I get to offer someone an opportunity to be on my show before I ask for anything from them. And the podcast manager. So I'm not going to go into this one today because that's not most of this audience. <laughs> podcast managers will help people manage their show. And so an ideal podcast manager is someone like a virtual assistant or a team of people like we have at Amplify You where you stay in your content creation zone as the host. And then when you're done recording, you pass them over to uh, the files over to the team. The team takes care of everything. And all of a sudden you have a podcast that's published and promoted and you didn't have to do any of that work. You just got to do the fun stuff and creating the content. So that's the whole goal of a podcast manager. Mm -hmm. so, I would love to know in the chat, which one are you? One, two, or three? Do you think you'd be a great guest, a great host, or a great podcast manager? Or do you think you'd be one and two, a host and a guest? Let's uh, see what you guys put in the chat box and Roger can let me know. So we do podcast management, like I said, at uh, Amplify You. So you record, let us do the rest so that you don't have to to be this woman pulling out her hair, trying to figure out editing when you're really a spiritual healer. That's not, that's, that's really what we want to avoid here. <laughs> so we have three, one, two, one and two, one and two, one and two, one, one and two. Awesome. So one, three, and the rest are ones and twos, and there's a lot of ones and twos. Excellent, excellent. I love it. And well, I, we're, bet, well, I bet the well, one we're, person, I bet the one person who put the, uh, but the three was, I'm going to guess, was Ian. No, it was no? Rhymes with Jason. Ah, Jason. Yeah, I can see that for sure. Jason, that would be a great, a great so, thing for so you So let to me do. ask you some questions before they disappear in the chat. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the disadvantages and advantages between video and audio podcasting? What makes a YouTube video a podcast? Those are the two questions for now. Okay. Um, so just the disadvantages of just doing audio only is that you're just, you just don't get on YouTube. That's all. So that's really the only disadvantage. Um, doing audio only is actually for some people a lot easier because you don't have to get dressed up and be on, on camera and have lighting and all that. Um, so it's a little bit, a little bit easier buy-in for some of my clients <laughs> who don't want to go on video. Um, it's easier to do the podcasting. And then what makes a YouTube video a podcast is funny. It doesn't, there's not really any differentiation <laughs> from a YouTube video once it's on there to a podcast. It's just that once it goes on YouTube, um, it's, it's part of a podcast show originally. And then now it's just put onto YouTube. So how some podcasts used to go onto um, YouTube would just be the audio version with a still image um, if they weren't using their videos to produce their show. So that makes sense. It's just a still image with the podcast playing behind it that goes onto YouTube. Um, that was traditionally how an audio only podcast got onto YouTube. But nowadays, because people are also doing it in video, it just goes on like a regular YouTube video with the audio uh, introduction with the music, the intro, the image of the show. And just kind of plays along like a regular video. So there isn't much differentiation there. So, and it's really just for the SEO and for the searchability because YouTube's really just a huge search engine. So it's another platform that you want to be on. So it's not, uh, it's, it's more beneficial to be on YouTube than not to be. Thanks, Michelle. No uh, problem. Marion, uh, uh, every, every VBN uh, training is recorded uh, and you'll be provided with the link and uh, maybe there's some way you can play the play the video training recording back at a slower speed. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that will help. Uh, but but no. Uh, and, and, and actually, if you really want to get fancy about it, you can concurrently play the video and Otter AI in order to record what Michelle is saying, and it comes out as text. Yeah. 
Back to you, Michelle. And that's because I'm speaking fast, right? That's correct. <laughs> yes, I do speak fast and I speak fast because I have a lot of content. I want to cram into an hour for you guys. <laughs> so if your ears can keep up, my my voice can keep going. <laughs> so what can podcasts do for you? So it can help you share your story, your message. It positions you as an expert. It helps you connect to your audience and it gives you that like no trust factor. So if I'm listening to a podcast, like I remember being so excited about listening to my very first podcast, Jamie Tardy, eventual millionaire. I felt like I could run up and give Jamie a big, huge hug. If I saw her at a conference, she has no idea who I am. But it was just that like no trust factor because it's so intimate in your ears that people are listening to you. So it's so really interesting. So if it's okay, I'm going to share a little bit about my story. So my story start about podcasting starts in 1999, like way before podcasting started. And it started when I graduated high school, I moved to Switzerland and I was able to live in a house and be a nanny for a year in Switzerland. When that year was over, two of my best friends from school came and met me and we traveled across uh, Europe. We had so much fun. Um, and unfortunately, one of my friends at that time, she, we were 19 years old. Um, she, we were out for a fun night in Monaco and then we went back to our hostel in um, the south of France. And when she walked home that night, she decided to walk along the train track through a tunnel, not realizing that trains run all the time in France. And so my friend and I were already back at the hostel and we were woken up to um, the people who owned the hostel taking us to the hospital because there's been an accident. And um, we got to the hospital and we found out my friend had been killed by a train that night. So she was 19. She'd had the best summer of her life. She had just blossomed into this amazing person and her life was cut short. So what does that story have to do with podcasting? Well, it's the way that I've lived my life for the last 20 years since that happened. So I have now do only things that make me happy, only things that are fun. I do have made a lot of decisions based on that story. And it is now that I share that story. Um, my podcasting, my actual podcasting journey started when I became a mom. So through my, my 20s, um, after that accident happened, I was worked on cruise ships. I went and worked in ski resorts. I did a lot of bungee jumping, skydiving. I just had the best time that I could have. And I did have a great time because I learned really young, unfortunately, through tragedy that you don't know how long you have to live. Your life is short and you're meant here. You're meant to be here to share your message with the world. So when I became a mom, I had already been an entrepreneur for several years. I had a business in fitness and nutrition. I had a gym and eight business, eight locations across BC. Um, and I then uh, sold my business to then start a, a co-working space. And when I was uh, had a co-working space, I started helping people with their businesses, helping them leverage their time because I saw these entrepreneurs that were working way too hard, not making enough money, and they were working hour for hour. And so when I took a little bit of time off from my business, when this little guy was born, my business brain got a little bit mushy. <laughs> and I have to say that he was so cute. But when I turned on the Apple TV and I realized this little purple button over here, I could listen to some business building, um, business building podcasts. I can listen to online marketing made easy. I can listen to all these shows that really inspired me and motivated me. It got me out of that like new mom postpartum kind of depression funk that I started going into. And it allowed me to put my earbuds in and take them for a walk and listen to listen to podcasts in the car. And we were listening to podcasts when we were playing on the floor. And so my business brain started to come back from mush a little bit after this. And we have this joke in our family that if my son, he's eight now, if he turns out to be an entrepreneur, we will know why, because he had to listen to so many marketing podcasts when he was little. And so uh, when I realized, really fell in love with podcasting, when I realized that I could listen, still be a great mom, but I also, wait, wait a second, I have a new car. I can listen to this thing in my car. There's a button there. Holy smokes. This thing is not going anywhere. So 
back to my story where your life is so short, you don't know how long you have to live. I said to my husband, I said, I really want to go RVing. We're going to take the whole family. We have two kids at this time. They're four years old and two years old, and we're going to go RVing. And he's like, you are crazy. We know nothing about RVing. I said, we don't, but I'm going to run a virtual summit and learn all about RVing. So for those of us that just heard about virtual summits, it's where I gathered 25 people who were experts in the RVing world, who had YouTube channels of 250,000 people and have just, you know, spent their lives living in an RV for the last few years. And they're really knowledgeable. They were experts in what they did. So I said, hey, great. I'm going to interview all these people. And I said, well, while I'm interviewing them, I can never figure out, I know I wanted a podcast this whole time, the last, the last few years that I've been listening to podcasts, but I didn't know what I wanted to do a podcast on. And I was like, ah, I can do a summit, interview all these people. And while I'm interviewing them for the summit, I'm going to create a 15 minute podcast during the same interview. So at the end of creating this virtual summit, which was called the, the Family RV Summit, which was helping take your family on the road <laughs> RVing. Uh, at the end of the summit, I had um, 4,000 people on my email list. I had interviewed 25 experts. I had made 25 podcast interviews. And then the podcast interviews would then sell the recordings of the summit for $47. So I had actually made about seven or $8,000 from this whole process of doing this. <laughs> Meanwhile, I had never stepped in a foot in an RV. I became an expert in the RV space just by association with all these people in my summit. And so I we took our family RVing for five months. So we went to all down California, Oregon, Arizona for five months with our family. So I share that part of the story because it has to do with how podcasting, how I first started my first podcast, but how becoming an expert in your space and by association and being able to reach out to people and learn something from them, you get to be, you get to get to know them. And so I was being invited to speak about RVing all over the place. I was being asked to uh, do all sorts of fun things. So it's just kind of interesting to show the case kind of how the podcasting, uh, online marketing, virtual summits, how getting in this expert space is a really, really fun thing. So this was our family RV trip all the way down through California, all the way to Mexico, to Cali- uh, California, Arizona. And then when we came home from there, uh, we well, just before we went on that trip, we'd sold our house and we decided to move off the grid and have a lifestyle that was a little bit more slower pace. We were running the rat race in Vancouver and we decided that it was time for us to hit the Sunshine Coast and um, live a little bit slower paced life. I know I, I speak like I still have a fast paced life, <laughs> but our lifestyles slow down quite a bit. And I work virtually from home now on podcasting. I did fall in love with podcasting and that whole virtual summit experience of interviewing people was amazing. That really got me hooked on the actual, um, actual podcasting side of it. So I thought, Hey, if I can do this in the RV space, I can help anyone do this in the expert space. And so we work with people who are authors, coaches, speakers, entrepreneurs, real estate agents, whatever they're doing, we're helping them get their message out there, and make a bigger impact in the world. So these are some of the shows. I have a parenting show as well. I'm a hired host on one of those shows as well. I also just founded the Canadian Podcast Network last year. And so these are some of the other shows that we that I have right now. So And these are some of the other shows that we've worked with, specifically a lot of these entrepreneurs are from Vancouver. And uh, these are just a couple of the shows that we've worked on in the last year or so. And so another thing by association, right? You look at my podcast and it's right next to Tony Robbins. Like, how cool is that? Like that's, that by association is pretty cool. (laughs) Um, So before I touch on the four biggest things that stop people from getting there, Roger, I just wanted to double check if there was any more questions. No further questions. Carry on. Okay, perfect. So the four biggest things that we see smart and savvy entrepreneurs stopping them in their tracks and before they ever get their podcast going, there's four major things. One is fear. And it's not just necessarily fear of failure. It's fear of exposure and visibility. And so I find there's both. People are either afraid that no one's going to listen or afraid that too many people are going to listen and they're not going to be ready for that. So um, one of our favorite ways of conquering the fear is just taking that small bit of action every day, getting towards your goal, practice on friends, practice interviewing people that, you know, 
doesn't doesn't matter. Just practice getting your voice out there. The more comfortable you are getting your voice out there, the easier it becomes. And if you go back and listen to anyone's first couple of episodes, they're never good. <laughs> the second thing is technology. So people think that you need like all this stuff, like the, <laughs> the picture on the top there. That's what I thought we needed to start a podcast. But really you just need a microphone and a laptop internet connection and Zoom. <laughs> Zoom is great. You don't have to record on Zoom, but we just find that Zoom has been the easiest uh, platform uh, for the quality of sound that we can get. Number three is perfectionism. Perfectionism is stagnation. So ever heard of that term analysis for paralysis? This happens in the podcasting world all the time. Someone comes up with an idea, but they can't quite get the right picture for their cover art. It's not quite the right um, music for the <laughs> intro and this can go on forever, right? So, um, you know, with like back to the saying I said a few minutes ago, um, you know, if you were not embarrassed by your first few episodes, you waited too long to get it out there. So just put it out there and refine and evolve. Uh, podcasts are a fluid thing. They're not stagnant. So you can change things. You can have different seasons. You can change the cover change the name. <laughs> it's all flexible. <laughs> so the point is to just get going. Michelle? Yes. Speaking, uh, can you go one slide back? Sure. Uh, speaking as oh. a representative of the perfectionist community, I want to point out you're missing an R. An R. An R? <laughs> from your perfectionist. Oh, right. I totally have that. <laughs> that was just to see if anyone's paying attention and if they're already perfectionists in the audience. <laughs> I, I will wear that <laughs> moniker like a badge of honor. Thank well, you know what, Roger? I show this presentation to a lot of people. You're the first one that's pointed that out. <laughs> Uh -huh. I have to go change that now. <laughs> All right. And the last one is time. So people think that podcasting takes up a lot of time and definitely don't get me wrong. It can take up a lot of time if it's not done correctly. So over the course of the last few years, we've crafted a way to make your podcast take up a lot less time than it needs to. So while a lot of people think like, oh, do I need a podcast? Because it's like adding another thing to the social media that you're already encouraged to do. So you already have a YouTube channel, you already have this. So I need to add podcasting and you feel like this, like you need to be everywhere and, and it's overwhelming and it's exhausting. So our solution to this is that you make your podcast the hub of your content for your entire business. So that means you take all of the, what you're going to do, the couple of interviews you're going to do and a couple of solo shows you're going to do. And you take all of that content and you record it at the very beginning of the month and then you take it and you repurpose the heck out of it. So you take your, um, you record it in video and you use those videos for YouTube and you transcribe the, um, the audios and you turn them into blog posts and you publish it as a blog post and you take quotes from it and make social media images and audiograms. And then you, then you have a foundation for your social media for the entire month. And if you can work it even backwards from there, um, you can actually take some of your content and think about themes and think about how, like, if you're going to create a book or a program. Um, so uh, Doug and I are in a book writing program right now, and I am using my podcast episodes as a large part of the books that we're writing. So um, you can use your, use your podcast as like a lot of different things. So repurposing it into a course afterwards. So people learn a different learning type. So just because they read it in a book doesn't mean they're going to remember it when they hear it either. So don't be afraid to repurpose your content everywhere. <laughs> and a podcast is always there. So once you publish a podcast once, you can keep remarketing it all, all the time. When you have a guest on your show, you can share your, your, your guests the show, but then share it with them another three times throughout the year so that you know they're sharing it with their audience more times and you're getting more exposure as well. So repurpose, <laughs> and that will save a lot of time. So you know what, what are we looking at here? Here's what we know. There's a million podcasts right now. That seems like there's a lot there. There's too many podcasts. I shouldn't bother. Nah, yeah, there's too many, too many out there. Well, a million podcasts, if we put it into perspective, um, there it's kind of like where blogging was in 2007. So there's still an opportunity to do extremely well in a podcast. Right now we have a comedy podcast that one of our entrepreneurs put out there. It's called Diner Talks with James. And it's like hitting number one in so many different countries in the comedy space, which is, which is interesting. Um, you know, there's 
our, we had a mom's podcast that hit top 20 in Canada and the US in the parenting space recently. So there's still room for exponential growth in the podcasting space. Um, there is four, there was in the last three days, more blog posts published than there are podcasts active right now. So if you put that into perspective, podcasting is still in its infancy stages for another few years. <laughs> it is on a huge up curve, um, but there's still lots of room in the industry. So don't think that you've lost your chance. What do we know about podcast listeners? They are affluent, educated, and loyal. And why do we know that? It's because originally podcasts were on Apple and uh, to be on, on iTunes and to have an iTunes account as a listener, you had to have a credit card on your, <laughs> on your profile. Now everyone online shops now, but that's how they were measuring it before is that typically a podcast listener was male, uh, above average income, and usually in the CEC suite and at a corporate job. That was the typical podcast listener. Now it's about 50, 50, I would say maybe 48% women to 52% men listeners. So it's quite a, a good diverse listening listenership. But 80% of all podcast listeners listen to most or all of each episode. And they listen to an, on average about seven a week. So this is Robin. Her experience with podcasting was that she ran a contest when she launched her show. She got 150 entries that helped leave a review on her show. And she hit number one in the parenting podcast in three countries on her launch week. And this wasn't the parenting podcast I was talking about a second ago. That was another one that just launched a few weeks ago. Uh, this is Janice Porter. You may know her. She's from Vancouver as well. Um, from her podcast, one of her guests invited her to come speak at a network marketing conference in front of 40,000 people. Um, and they, they heard her on a podcast. Um, this is Candy. She said, we saved her 40 hours this week and a lot of gray hair. <laughs> and then, uh, so that's, I just wanted to show those three testimonials because I think it shows that there's just, if you look at podcasting, if you're looking at podcasting just for the numbers and the downloads, then you might not be super happy with your results. Um, we not, we're not all Joe Rogan. We're not all going to get millions of downloads and Spotify is not going to pay us millions of dollars. Um, but what you can do as an entrepreneur with your podcast is what I'm going to talk about next. And it's super, it's a super powerful platform when used correctly in your business and positioned correctly in your business. You're open for a question, Michelle? Absolutely. Yeah. Question from Wes Vincent. Is it possible to monetize a podcast that is not about your profession? and more for entertainment value. How would you go about doing that? Yeah, so for podcasts, there's a lot of podcasts out there that are like hobby ones or personal interests, like, you know, motorcycles or knitting or things like that. And there's lots of ways that you can do that. So these kind of podcasts, what we call our super niche kind of podcasts, and um, there's something called Patreon, which is um, a platform that people can go on and donate, like, you know, you can, a set of different tiers. So for, if you donate $10 a month, you get to see, um, say it's a knitting show. You get to see, um, an additional knitting, um, you know, you get to see an additional design and you get to get the, the, the blueprint for the design of whatever they're making that month. Or, you know, it's a little bit more, um, more time with the host. It's a little bit more behind the, behind the scenes thing. So a lot of YouTubers do Patreon. I know a lot of podcasters in that kind of space do um, do this kind of thing as well. So basically it's based on a donation, uh, monthly subscription donation um, site or ads or sponsorship. So you could totally do a podcast all about shaving and be sponsored by all the shaving companies and all the shaving equipment. And, and that's definitely a way of making money from your podcast as well. Van is asking, what was the contest that your podcast client did and on what platform did she do this contest? Yeah, all of our all of our all of our clients did the same contest, and um, it's just to ask your audience to go and review your show. And so, what we get them to do is um, pull their audience before, ask them what they want to win, and then they just are doing this all on social media. So, Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, wherever platform that they are mostly on, or LinkedIn. And then, so basically the audience goes and leaves a review on your, cause they, how you raise up in the, in the rankings and the algorithms of, of iTunes, iTunes is really the only platform that really 
takes a lot of this into account. Um, but they want you to uh, get lots of reviews. So they're going to give, if you get lots of reviews on your show in a short amount of time, it raises you up the rankings. Um, your audience can take a screenshot of the review that they gave you and then post it on social media and tag you. And that just helps you get more exposure to your show, and more people to go and listen to it. No further questions? Okay, awesome. Moving along. So the five powerful ways to amplify your influence and make more money with podcasting. Um, so I think of, I mean, I think of a podcast as um, a lot, a little bit differently than maybe some people do, but I think it's like the number one way of building my network. So I've used my podcast as a tool, as a networking tool, like I said earlier, to reach out to people that I maybe wouldn't be invited to reach out to otherwise. Um, I've also used it um, to build connections, um, to introduce other people to each other. Um, it's just a really great networking tool, I think. <laughs> and so the more podcasts I have, the better. Um, I have more opportunities to have people on for interviews, meet more people, expand my network that way. So I love my podcast as far as the networking for all the connections you can build and all the people you can reach out to. And um, there's lots of different ways that you can see in um, different platforms who has a similar audience to you. Um, there is a platform called Podchaser where it's kind of like the Facebook for podcasters where you help each other. The really cool thing about the podcasting industry is that they're all, they're all it's a collaborative space. So um, we're not competing against each other. It's it, it's actually in everyone's benefit. If I if I bring on someone who is a host of a show that has a similar network to me, um, my audience will get value. Um, they'll get a new audience, and vice versa, right? So it's a little bit of um, it's a it's a nice collaborative environment, a nice collaborative um, industry in general. Podcasting is going to position you as the expert. Um, it's going to allow you. Um, the, the voice and the space to become the expert. So say you only have interviews on your show, it's going to be a little bit harder to position yourself as the expert unless you're the host of the show. Um, and so it's good to have, have your, some solo shows in there as well. So get you're allowed, you can uh, share some of your content as well as the expert, as well as then elevating your guests when the guests come on. So it's a great way to position yourself as an expert. And you have this media tool that now, and like I said before, repurposing your content. So taking that content, those few hours of actually using um, your show or using it in your show, you can then repurpose all that content so many, so many different ways. Uh, we transcribe everything and reuse everything and cut and paste everything and chop up the if you, especially even if you if you think about um, recording your content in a very specific way, like. So today we're going to talk about the three ways, um, three ways social media can boost your business. And then each of those three things can be chopped up to its own little individual um, video or own individual audio clip or own audiogram or image. So um, lots of different ways that you can repurpose your content so that you've got tons of content without doing a ton of work. You ready for a question? Sure. What are some good platforms to start creating podcasts for free? So free comes with its things, <laughs> right? So if you're looking for a free platform, um, you're going to have to deal with them putting ads in front of your in front of your content. So for fifteen dollars a month or twelve dollars a month, I would get a paid platform. So paid platforms would be Captivate, Libsyn. Podberry, uh, Blueberry, Podbean, Buzzsprout, those are all podcast hosting sites that are, the free one would be Anchor. Um, and, but like I said, it, they, they, if you just look in the fine print, because they'll own your content and put ads in front of it. No further so, questions. Yeah, so as far as like, I, just to talk about the equipment uh, in general. So the only equipment that you should really need to buy, it would be a microphone. And a microphone costs you anywhere from 80 to $200 for a really good one. Um, and then the only other investment, if you're doing everything yourself outside of your equipment is paying for your podcast hosting service. So you know how 
our websites have a host or well, podcast has to have a host as well. So those names that I mentioned a few minutes ago, those are all called podcast hosting sites. And what they do is they give you this feed called the RSS feed. That feed is what you submit to all the directories. And that's what gets your podcast out there in all the, all the different places. And so I would pay the 12, between 12 and $19 a month uh, for a, a hosting site. And that's really the only expense if you're doing everything yourself that you're gonna incur in podcasting. So it's pretty affordable to get started in that way. Yeah. All right. So back to number four is pre-qualified leads. So um, what that means is that, so if I'm selling coaching services from my podcast or um, I have a membership site, or I really want to bring people um, to work with me, um, you know, in podcast management, um, by the time they listen to my show, they're going to really get to know me. Um, it's really important. Podcast listeners really want you to be authentic. Um, they want you to be vulnerable. They want you, they want to know the real you and they're going to get to know the real you. Like if you, if you are worried about running out of content in your show, you haven't quite peeled back your onion far enough, we call it. So in order to find that right content that for you to do, deliver, you're never going to run out of content. So you know, you've got the right amount of content. And when you're delivering that content, if you're authentic and you're real about it, you're showing your real personality, your audience is going to love you for that they're going to like know and trust you and they're going to get to know you very well. And at the end of the day, they will probably, um, you know, buy something from you or join your community or move. The idea from a podcast is to inspire a listener to make them take action. So that's when you know you've done your job, when your audience is inspired to take action. And that action should be to join your community or work with you further. Number five is creating a movement. So that's one of the easiest ways to get people to take action and inspire is to have something outside of yourself for your podcast that you're creating a movement. Maybe it's a, a movement of moms who would want to be stress-free, or maybe it's a, a movement of social media managers who, you know, do things really well. I don't know, <laughs> but creating a movement, um, you know, like Roger Hats with inspired talks, right? So things that are inspiring or, you know, things that, um, things that you can get people to get on board with and get involved with. And the best way to do this is actually bring it all the way back to the idea stage. If you can get your audience, your social media following, your friends, your family involved in, hey, do you like this cover art or this cover art? Vote on it. Hey, do you like this music or this music? Or what do you think I should who talk about? Or who should I interview? Or, you know, when your audience is involved in the creation of a show, it's like creating a movement. They're going to be involved and inspired to go and leave your review and be a follower and listener on your show. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so get, get your audience involved right from the beginning. So Ryan, he's from Vancouver here at a year and a half into his show. He had about 250,000 downloads and he had a sold out coaching program with client wait lists. And he was able to do that because Again, he was delivering huge value on his podcast. And over time, it took a while, right? Like people don't just join, you know, several thousand dollar <laughs> coaching program from the first time they listen to you. But he had people say, Ryan, I've been listening to your show for like a year or I, I binge listened to 50 episodes. Now I'm ready to work with you. So um, if you think about some, if you're a coach or author or speaker, some of the best content that you can put into your podcast is like, what are your frequently asked questions? What does your audience need to know about you or working with you in order to work with you? Emily, she used to be a DJ here in Vancouver um, on the radio. And she has this like crazy podcast is very small niche. She's called love your anxiety. And so what she did is she said, Hey girls, if you know, if you, if you can relate to something in this podcast, um, send me a direct message on Facebook or Instagram. Let's talk or join my Facebook group. Okay. So they would join her Facebook group in there. There's three free, free videos called Ask My Anxiety Bootcamp. And in there, they would listen to her, um, her, her videos there. But when they joined the Facebook group, it asked them, what's your problem? What are you struggling with right now? How can I help you? And so it gave her all the content she needs for her podcast gave her all the problems that her audience was dealing with. So it was a really great insight. And so she was getting 10, 12 bookings per month um, into her coaching program for discovery calls. So she said podcasting is the number one ROI in her business. 
And so we covered a lot today, guys. And I think there's a few more things that I can talk about if we have a few minutes. Um, we're almost that wrapped up here. Um, but we talked about what is podcasting all about? What's the landscape about? What my story involved in, in podcasting? What are the three biggest opportunities in podcasting? So that was the host, the guest, and the podcast manager. What were the four barriers stopping people from launching? And what were the five most powerful ways to amplify your influence and make more money using podcasting? So I just want to leave you with this thought. Everyone has a story. So you're all here to share your story. So some of us will get our voices out there in the world <laughs> and we'll get out there using podcasts. I just want to bring it back to my friend, Cecilia. Her life was cut short. She didn't have a chance to share her message with the world. Her voice didn't get to make an impact in the world. So you, you do, you have a story and you do have the power to change lives with your story. So what is your story? What is it that, and who needs to hear it? And what are you waiting for? Get that story out there because you don't know how long you're here for. So I wanted to leave you, not to leave you on the doom and gloom note like that, but I do want to share with you, I do have um, an opportunity for you to, if you're thinking about podcasting or you think that you might want to try podcasting, let's have a podcast launch strategy. Let me, uh, spend 30 minutes with you. I can walk you through some strategies, some things that while you're thinking about getting started, totally complimentary, no obligation. Or if you have a show already and you want me to take a look at it and see and do an audit on it, see what you're missing, see how you could improve it. I'm happy to do either of those things for you um, for 30 minutes. So we can book uh, on my link right there. It's michelleabraham.youcanbook.me is my booking link. And I also have another free, two free gifts for you guys. So we talked about, some people were asking about monetization. And so I have a business partner in some of the things I do. Um, it's called, his name is Evans Putman. And his background is, um, he was involved in a real estate podcast, him and his business partner at the time. They took a, a real estate podcast to half a million dollars in revenue from their podcast. And then they actually sold the podcast for six figures. So Evans has put together a free guide, which is five steps to create predictable podcast profits on autopilot. And so this is how coaches, course creators, consultants, and expert entrepreneurs can turn podcast traffic leads and high ticket sales into a high ticket sales machine. So he's got a free gift there with some videos. And then I've also put together seven top places where podcasters search for the perfect guest. So you can book interviews to grow your authority and make a bigger impact. For those of you who are looking for guesting on, on shows, this is a great, a great way to um, look for um, places where you can be found as a guest. Um, and I also put earlier in the chat box, um, oh, we have a connect and collaborate podcasters call. So every two weeks we do a call where you can come on as a guest or as a host and connect with each other, no um, necessary, no, no experience necessary. We just come and meet a whole bunch of cool people, usually get an interview booking out of there or so. And uh, it's a great place to come as a guest. And Doug was there a few weeks ago and got some interviews out of there, which is great. And so I'll leave you with my information here. So thanks for having me, Roger. Here has been awesome. You guys have asked some great questions. I hope I've answered most of them. And um, this is where you can find me. And um, feel free to join our podcast, my podcast coach Facebook group. That's what it's called, my podcast coach. And there's lots of people in there and we do lots of free training in there. Michelle, a question from Wes. Uh, can you put the link to the 30 minute session in the chat box? Sure, it's actually just here again. It's michelleabraham.youcanbook.me. Oh, that's it, michelleabraham.youcanbook.me. Okay, Wes, does that um, take care of your question? Uh, yeah, thank you, I just saw it. You're welcome. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Michelle, you're bang on time, it's 8.59. Perfect. <laughs> thank you very much for being punctual, perfection, love that. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for sharing all this super well-organized information. Um, I now know infinitely more about podcasting than I did exactly one hour ago, <laughs> which is a great thing. Audience, uh, we hope that Michelle and I have given you some uh, uh, a very high return on your investment of the time uh, you have set aside to join us this evening. 
So I'm going to say good night for now. I'm going to stop the recording. Live audience, do not go away. <laughs>